Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. We were almost off the list. <laughs> Today, all hail Queen Victoria of Orange County. Dean McDermott and Nikki Paris are here to talk daddy issues. It's like hurting cats. And Connor Saley is back to catch us up on Life After Paradise. We'll see what happens. This is your reality check. This is the best. Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Belke. And I'm Dave Quinn. Welcome to Reality Check. Today is quite the reality party. You've got both of us guiding you through today's show. Yes, I'm so excited I that know. we get to do this together. We have to, uh, a lot to talk about, so let's jump right into our top five. Let's do it. At number five, it's a boy. Congratulations are in order for Ricky Martin and husband Juan Yosef. The singer announced on Tuesday that the couple had welcomed their fourth child, a son named Ren. Martin shared the happy news on his Instagram stories, and Ren joins big sister Lucia and big twin brothers Mateo and Valentino. Ren's arrival comes nearly two years after Martin announced that he and Yosef had secretly tied the knot after meeting on Instagram in 2016. How exciting. How do you like the name Ren? I love it. I think it's totally beautiful. And it's exciting to see uh, Ricky Martin in this sort of a role, you know? Yeah. Living La Vida Loca at home with all those kids. And those are going to be some cute babies. Yes. Right? Oh my gosh. I oh know. my gosh. So, so cute. <laughs> at number four. Caitlyn Jenner was definitely feeling the love on her birthday. The former Olympian who turned 70 on Monday celebrated on Tuesday night at Nobu Restaurant in Malibu with an intimate group of family and friends. Her youngest child, Kylie Jenner, documented the evening on her Instagram story. Also in attendance were Kim and Kourtney Kardashian, Brandon Jenner and his girlfriend and family and friends, Kaylee Stroker and Sophia Hudgens. A huge, huge party. It's glad I'm glad to see them all getting along. Yeah, can you imagine partying with the Kardashians? We always talk about them, but who would be uh, your favorite to party with? I mean, Chloe, obviously. Oh, Chloe. yeah? Yeah, she, I feel like, keeps it real the most. I, I think it'd be like chill to hang out with Kendall, right? Yeah, she's Kendall? so low key. I don't know. All right. More like a chill vibe. There's plenty of Kardashians seems to go around. We yeah, I mean, it's probably one. never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> never know. We'll All right, see. at number three. Age is not just a number. Evan Rachel Wood responded to a comment that Paris Hilton left on a post that Millie Bobby Brown shared on Tuesday. The Stranger Things star modeled a leopard print mini dress with spaghetti straps with the caption, same dress but very different day. Paris complimented the star with her signature phrase saying, that's hot. Evan simply responded to the heiress's remark, reminding her that Millie Bobby Brown is only 15. What are your thoughts on this? Ooh, I'm sure that Paris didn't mean any harm. She says that's hot about everything. She likely did not know that she was 15, but I love drama, so yeah. I live for any sort of a class. I mean, I online. agree. We should not be sexualizing children. <laughs> yeah. um, but I do think that Paris probably didn't know the age, and that is her signature phrase. Right. So She's going to say that at someone's funeral. That yeah. Hot. Like, that's just what it's going to be. Very true. At number two, Hollywood is mourning the loss of actor and comedic legend John Witherspoon. News broke on Tuesday that the Friday actor passed away at age 77. Celebrities such as T.I., Mike Epps, and Ice Cube recalled their fondest memories with Witherspoon on social media. Known as Pops, Witherspoon is famous for starring in such works as Soul Plane, The Waynes Brothers, and The Boondocks. John Witherspoon is survived by wife Angela and sons Alexander and John David. The actor was also set to reprise his role in the upcoming fourth installment last Friday, which is currently in pre-production. I'm sad about this. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of his, and I would have loved to see that new movie. What's your favorite project of his? Oh, uh, Boomerang is probably yeah. a good choice. I don't know. I, I, I kind of love everything that yeah, he's done. Yeah, really sad news. Nice to see the love and support on social media for him, yeah. and our thoughts are with his family and his friends. For sure. All right, at number one. Kenya Moore is setting the record straight about her surprising split from husband Mark Daly. The Real Housewives of Atlanta star, who shares one-year-old daughter Brooklyn Doris with Daly, opens up for the first time about the breakup exclusively in this week's issue of People, saying that the two haven't filed for divorce yet, and she's hopeful they can find a way back together. But only if they can work through their issues, saying, I didn't get married to quit. I believe in trying it all before you walk away, especially when you have a child. And we are a family. For more on this story and Kenya's full statement, visit People.com. Dave, you broke this story. Yes. So, yeah, what's it looking like for these two? Well, I'm very hopeful that they'll find their way back to each other. A an important note to say is that throughout the entire story, Kenya really spoke very highly of Mark. She complimented mm -hmm. him as a father. She complimented even how much he loves her. So it does sound like they're in a place right now where she really respects him, and she's just frustrated that the two of them haven't necessarily been having that communication. The big thing that she did is she really addressed these major rumors that have been going around that there's been infidelity mm -hmm. and secret families 
Um, she squashed all of that. Okay. But it still has thrown a lot of fans for a loop. You know, they were on the Tamron Hall show, and two days later they were splitting. And nobody really knows where that came from. So all in right. People, she really explains what went wrong. We'll keep you posted. We're going to yeah. go to a quick break. But when we come back, we'll be chatting with two of the hosts of the podcast, Daddy Issues, Dean McDermott and Nikki Paris. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. Dave and I have some pretty amazing guests over here on the couch. Dean McDermott and Nikki Paris. What's Woo. up, guys? Hey. Uh, we're already having a blast. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. Yeah. We're not leaving here. We're sleeping here. <laughs> we're just staying here forever. <laughs> Good. People please. Dorm and board. There's plenty <laughs> of room. We have a lot to talk about. First, let's talk about your podcast, Daddy Issues. How did this come about? Um, it came about, uh, I met Adam Hunter, who's our another, uh, another one of our hosts on the show, through stand-up comedy. Um, he encouraged me to, to do stand-up, which is a lifelong dream. And uh, I met Nikki in the process because he hosts these comedy nights that Adam <laughs> does. And the three of us just hit it off so well that it was like, hey, guys, let's just do a podcast. And Daddy Issues was born. It was history. Yeah. It, I mean, really? From the history. moment we started, it's been getting such great feedback. And I think the three of us have, like, such a dynamic energy. We're going to run the Jonas Brothers out of town. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh? And why, why Daddy Issues? How'd you land on the title? Well, <laughs> <laughs> he loves to say that. I'm a daddy of six. Yeah. Adam's a new daddy, and Nikki needs a daddy. Yeah. So there you go. Just, it, I don't bring much to the table. <laughs> I just found out what a mortgage was like six yeah. months ago, so I don't know how to change a tire. He brings the pretty to yeah. the show. Barely, but yes. <laughs> I love the podcast because there's such candid conversations about everything from fatherhood to romance and sex. You yeah. talk a lot about your romance life with <laughs> wife Tori Spelling. Has there been anything that she's like, that is off limits, don't talk about that? When it comes to your sex life? She, <laughs> she is my biggest supporter. God bless her. Um, and, you know, I had a pretty good run of talking about anything and everything. But <laughs> we had a conversation, and she's like, maybe you just maybe want to pull back a little bit. Yeah. Was that after um, the CBD lube? Was that what? Um, was I'm not, yeah, that I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was, was the, the vajazzling or pooping with the door open. I don't know. Right. <laughs> but I have to say the sexual chemistry between them, like, I've never thought I'd be into a threesome. But I, wow. Oh, yeah. you yeah. would not allow that. It's that powerful. No, not, no, no. Nikki and I. Have I to wait first. Nikki's like Nick, Nikki's like a brother. It'd be yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. I'm glad that it's yeah. that palpable, even after six kids. Yeah. Yeah. You two do talk about a lot of sex on the podcast. You talk about sex on your stand-up. Do you? I mean, this is reality check. I guess we're just going there. Do you Let's ever do swap sex tips? What's the best tip you got from the other person? I asked Dean, how do I get? How do I get the guy not to run and leave? So oh. he yeah. Me. Yeah, and it's just uh, tie him up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, time to something good. solid like a, good, a solid couch. Yeah. Um, do we do we exchange tips? You give me a lot of sex tips. You do. You try to encourage me to be more sexual and less. Well, I encourage. Yeah, I encourage him to be less prudish. That's. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like Julie Andrews in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very boring. He's a germaphobe, so it's kind of yeah. difficult. Oh, oh yeah. That makes it hard. Yeah. Like, I believe you got to get messy and sweaty in the bedroom. And right. Nikki's just Not like me. Yeah. Because when I sweat, I look like Little Richard. <laughs> and how do you find time to do His that? His mascara with six runs. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. How do you keep the romance alive with six kids? You know something. It was there from the day we met, and it's just there every day to now six yeah. uh, five kids later it's uh we we just we're we love each other and we're obsessed with each other and we're super attracted to each other so that part's easy you know um and then finding the time is like once the kids are in in, in all in bed it's, you know it's, it's party time <laughs> it's go time yeah and it's like is that an earthquake it's like no it's just mom and dad <laughs> yeah, no, go back to sleep if you have the time what does the perfect date night look like with you and tori um the perfect date night could be something as simple as you know Netflix in bed. Um, uh, it's it's great to get out and see a, a grown up movie in a theater. I, I don't <laughs> remember the last time I saw a grown up movie um, or or dinner. But just spending time with each other, just away from the kids, is a perfect date night. Yeah. yeah. And you're single, right? Oh, I'm single, right? Are you ready to mingle? Are you looking for anyone? Um, I am, but I haven't found anybody. I'd really like to be in a relationship. Yeah. Because... He's not looking very hard, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm not really looking. Which is very good, hard. actually, because if you look, you'll never find. That's I true. Find mm. You have so many gay like friends it. and stylists, and you're, you know, I'm He's not, not trying to hook There's you so up. Many... No. No, I. I... 
I offered to hook you up, and you're like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Your DMs aren't blowing up after no. the podcast? That's great. The DMs are blowing up, and people are like, don't kill yourself. Everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> <Can> I, everyone's <laughs> like stay off the railroad track. And no. everyone's like, let me take you out. The suicide hotline is constantly. Because the two of them talk DMing. about relationships and, and, you know, all the great sex that they have. And I'm like, sometimes I have to, like, bully myself into masturbating. So. <laughs> It's different. That's what I bring to the to the trio. We're gonna take a hard turn from that. I'll tell you yeah, that. I don't blame you. Thank you know, you. I want to ask you about BH nine hundred two and zero because I am so I love the show and That's I'm so great. happy for so Tori. Great. The character of her husband was kind of based on you. Seemed to have some issues with her success, her character's success. Is that something that was based on anything that was happening behind the scenes? Um, you know, I think there's always a little bit of life imitating art. Yeah. I, I'm thrilled that Ivan Sergei is playing me. I mean, <laughs> handsome he is. Um, but, uh, you know, it's difficult when both people are actors. Uh, right. And so, you know, when one, one's really busy and the other one has to be the stay-at-home parent, you know, it's a little difficult because life on set and being creative is amazing. Um, and sometimes, you know feeding kids and changing diapers is not so glamorous. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a balance, you know, it really is. But the thing I'm grateful about is being able to spend that much time with the kids. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not a nine to fiver, so, you know, I don't see the kids at night. I get them all day, which is great. That's awesome, I love that. And how do you kind of find balancing that with like work and life with, uh, with the busy podcast and everything that you're doing? Um, we're lucky. We have the full support of the comedy store, so we pretty much can pick whatever hours we want to record. So, um, you know, if if someone's schedule isn't working, we can change. So it's really easy getting in to do the... It's flexible. Yeah, to, it's good. To get into the comedy well, store. It seems like you're doing a great job, but... Thank you. What's been the biggest dad mistake that you've made? Um... Biggest parent fail. Having five kids. <laughs> 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 um, the biggest dad mistake, um... Leaving them in a really hot car for hours. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Oh. He's just kidding, everybody. I'm kidding. I'm oh. kidding. I'm that kidding. really good. No. Press the room. Um, maybe the biggest dad mistake is maybe not having as much patience as I should. Yeah. You know, um, because it's a lot. Five kids is a lot. And, you know, you know, I mean, I have six, but uh, Jack's 21 and he's in San Francisco. So right. he's easy. He's easy. Um, but, you know, having five kids, it's it, patience. Your patience wears a little thin. So my biggest mistakes are sometimes losing my temper when I shouldn't. But fast forward and once you're an empty nester, it's going to be different, right? It's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> did, I say that out did I say that out loud? I said it out loud, didn't I? Mm. It's okay. Send that right over to me. <laughs> Can we have that? Nikki, have you helped um, Dean with his dad jokes? Does he make Dean's a lot actually of a great comic, so there's no <laughs> corny jokes coming Good. from Dean. Good. And I want 20% Dean of every other detail that you get. No, Dean's a fantastic comic, and I'm excited that we get to perform with each other so I'm much. Thrilled. We, we go I'm before and after each other. We're like Donnie and Marie. I love yeah, it. Yeah, well, it's great because you just had your New York City comedy debut. debut yeah, so how the Broadway did it Broadway Comedy go? Club. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. It was a great crowd. I was nervous as hell. Yeah. Because um, I've never experienced a New York audience before. Um, and it went great. It, how is the audience different in New York? Um, I find that they're they're really ready. They're, they're raw. They're ready. Like, okay, we're at a comedy show. Let's go. Let's yeah. laugh. You know, where in L.A., they're kind of, this is the L.A. stance. Mm. L.A., they have their right. crystals yeah. on the table. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different. <laughs> And Nikki, this is a big night for you tonight because you're headlining Caroline's. Congratulations. Yes. Thank That's you. a huge feat. Thank you. I'm curious kind of what sort of tips you gave Dean when he was entering into comedy that you had uh, learned from a long history of performing <laughs> here in New York and in L.A. Well, the first night that you did stand up, he was so nervous. And I said to him, Dean, there are so many unfunny people who do stand up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I said, it's true. just fine. Yeah. Be yourself. And I think the first time you performed for Tori, he was really nervous. And he called me and I said, just be slow <laughs> and be yourself. And they will love you. Into it. I was That's at good. a comedy show last week and there were so many hecklers. And it was so infuriating. But who's better at dealing with the hecklers? I'm an animal. Yeah, yeah. Nikki, yeah. Yeah, Nikki's yeah. really good. I, I love confrontation. Which oh, all right. Might also be why I'm single. Yeah. But I love I'm, when I'm people, compiling the list. I love yeah, when I'm people try to like it. jump in. I'm like, I only get like 10 minutes sometimes. I'm yeah. like, this yeah. is about me and my muffin top. So <laughs> don't think you're gonna take that time for me. Right. I drove uh, here on a Chevy Cruze. <laughs> um, you two have been spending a lot of time together. I know yes. you have a lot of love for each other, but if you had to say your biggest pet peeve about oh. the other person, what is it? Yeah, Dean. <laughs> my biggest pet peeve, Nikki, is 
he is so down on himself. He's just like, oh my God, this is gonna be horrible. Oh my God, just you know, run me over with the car before the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suck, I'm horrible. Right up into the minute he steps on stage, then he gets up and he kills, and then he gets off stage, he goes, oh, I'm horrible, I'm horrible. It starts again. I like the sound of my own voice and I'm just complaining. <laughs> I think that's what it is. So that's, yeah. that's my biggest pet peeve with Nikki, because he's so good. I mean, how do we get you out of that? Come on, Nikki. N nothing ever will. No, it's hard. I I'm, I'm kind of negative. negative. It's where I my know. comedy comes from. Uh, yeah, I love, I love to yourself. I do. No, I do. Trust me. But I love to complain. Too. Everyone has those in I mean, our It's a balance, Dave. We'll get you through that. Thank you. I, I, just, I suppose the podcast is also kind of therapeutic as well. Oh, yeah. Very. And yeah. there's no copay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, what's your biggest pet peeve about him? Yeah, honestly, he is so easygoing, and he makes me look like such a monster <laughs> everywhere that we go. It's, it's it's really annoying, honestly. I really wish that you would like flip a table be like Teresa okay. Judice or something. <laughs> or, okay, well maybe today the day. Maybe not today will be the day. Over. There yeah. really is no pet peeves that I have about you. If I had to think Aww. of one. Oh. That's nice to see. No, it really, yeah, it really is. We're buddies, you know. Yeah. Now I have to, I'm going through the lazy Susan things that could bother me. <laughs> it really doesn't. I'm the high maintenance one. I'm a sweater. I have to have yeah. the air conditioning on. <laughs> but you don't smell. Thank a lot you. of sweaters smell. No, 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 no. Yeah. no. <laughs> That's good nice. to know. Let's not start that rumor. <laughs> Dean, on the uh, podcast, you had a really nice episode with your ex-wife, Mary Jo. You yes. guys talked about how you kind of come back together um, after a, a, a rocky past. Yeah. And I know that it was at your son's 21st birthday party that it seems yeah. that you yeah. found that piece. Yeah, how it, how it, are things today? Things today are great. Are yeah. great. Um, Jack turned 21. Here he is right there. Handsome Aww. boy. Um, and... Uh, you know, we wanted to have a birthday party for him, and he wanted Mary Jo there, and um, so we got his friends together, and, and Tori and Mary Jo were texting to organize the party, and the text just got friendlier and friendlier, because I had blocked Mary Jo for like three years. <laughs> right, yeah. So her and Tori were, were uh, connecting, and they just sort of became friends over the text during the party, and then when we got to the party, um, the love fest began, and, and fences were mended, and hatchets were buried, and we had a great time. And the thing that was amazing was we looked over, and Jack had the biggest smile on his face. He had the best night to see everybody getting along, his mom, his dad, his his stepmom. Right. So it was it was great, and you know it's all for Jack at the end of the day. Doesn't so. that feel good? Oh, it too? felt great. Oh yeah. my God, it's it's just such a great feeling. Yeah. Do you That's like cool. to mend fences with your exes? No. <laughs> <laughs> Once we're done, they're all blocked. Blocked forever. The eulogy is given <laughs> in my studio apartment. You're out. <laughs> Well, I'm really um, glad to hear that. Yes. It's, that's good. Yeah, and it awesome. sounds like Jack was a big help with that because I know he has a strong relationship with Tori as well, right? Yeah, yeah. He was really instrumental in that. And, you know, through the years, it was something that he always wanted and he'd always hint to it. And uh, so that night was was really magical. And then three days later, we had her on, uh, we had Mary Jo on uh, Daddy Issues. Yeah. Nail biter. Yeah, it was a good episode. She's funny. She's, Were she's you nervous about that? I wasn't there. My grandpa died that oh, week. I'm sorry, I'm I did sorry. watch it. I watched it in my bed. I was biting my nails. I had no nails <laughs> on my finger. I was nervous for you guys, but I'm glad that you guys were able to. No, it was fun. It was a, it's a good episode. That's yeah. good. Well, thank you two for stopping by. You. you have so much I'm going nervous. on. This was a lot of fun. Thank I wish you. you could stay forever. God, Come back. <laughs> and everyone, listen and subscribe to Daddy Issues, available on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, just about anywhere you listen to podcasts. New episodes air weekly. But don't go anywhere because when we come back, Andrew and I are going to be talking with Bachelor Nation stud Connor Saley. Keep your head held high and be hopeful about what you want, what you're looking for, and that you will find that eventually. Oh, heartbreak. So hey, everyone. <laughs> Our next guest was first introduced to the world on The Bachelorette. Then he went to paradise. And now he's Skyping in to reality check. Hey. So hello, Connor. How's it going? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. My first question, because Halloween is tomorrow, what are you dressing up as? Uh, so someone told me to be uh, John Paul Jones for Halloween, actually. <laughs> so I was going to get a Speedo, some uh, a long blonde hair wig, and some chicken nuggets. I think I'm good to go. <laughs> that is amazing. Also, you both have that really low voice, so it's completely <laughs> believable. <laughs> it would yeah, totally yeah. Work. What, what are you being? Um, I think I'm going to go as a cheetah, but uh, we have really good makeup artists here, so it's going to be like a sick cheetah with all the makeup and everything. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Nice, nice. I, like I am, that. I I like am that. passing on Halloween this year, but I have to ask you, how's Oliver? Is he going to be making an appearance with you today? Oliver is not going to be making an appearance. I was actually with him back home in Michigan this past weekend, but um, I live in Dallas, so uh, we're, we're apart right now, unfortunately. 
So we haven't seen you since after you left Paradise. We want to talk all about that. Whitney chased you down and caught you in your hotel. Uh, we know that that didn't quite work out. What did you learn from that relationship? Yeah, I mean, I think coming off the show, you know, you're on a high of coming off of this fairy tale and we definitely liked each other and wanted to explore that. I think realistically, we just kind of realized that um, as we got to know each other better, that we were better as friends and um, we have a lot of respect for each other, but just wasn't right for a relationship. Um, so there's no, you know, ill will against either of us. And, um, you know, we both just want the best for each other, but um, I'm still, you know, looking for that one that's right for me. And, um, you know, not gonna settle until I find that. Yeah, and it was hard to watch you in Paradise because you had a lot of heartbreak, things didn't work out. We saw Dean interfere in your budding romance with Kaylin. Did you feel like she never really gave you a fair shot with all that? Yeah, I mean, that was extremely difficult, especially watching it back because, you know, who knows what would have happened if the roles were flipped, if I was there at the beginning or if Dean and I were there at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was definitely difficult to think that through, um, especially because a lot of the things Kaylin was saying to me really gave me no indication that if Dean were to come back, she would leave. Um, so that's why it was so confusing when he did come back. And ultimately later that night, like I did kind of break down just because I was so confused and upset about the whole situation. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows what would have changed if, you know, things had played out differently. Um, but obviously they're they're great together. Um, they're really into each other and like each other a lot. So, you know, I am happy for them. Mm -hmm. So where are we standing now? Are you dating anyone specifically now? Uh, no, I'm, I'm a single man right now. Uh, um, focusing on a lot of other stuff, but, uh, you know, definitely open to dating. All, All right. right. I want to know what is the first thing that grabs your attention when you're talking to a girl? Uh, whew. Uh, that's a tough, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I, I love just like pretty eyes and an awesome smile to me, just like a girl that smiles a lot, has fun, is super attractive. Um, but also, I don't know, just a girl that's like very conversational and outgoing. Um, to me, like, I like that cause I'm a little more reserved. So I need someone that kind of brings me out of my shell a little bit. Would you go back? to Bachelor in Paradise, would you date someone else in the Bachelor universe, or are you kind of close uh, to that? I don't, that's a tough question. Uh, I did not have a great time in Paradise <laughs> last time, so um, a little bit of a uh, sour taste in my mouth from that, but um, I don't know, who, who knows? It, it kind of depends on, you know, who's on the girls on Peter's season, if there's someone I'm potentially interested in from there. Um, if there is, then, you know, I'm not opposed to going back on, but um, I don't just want to go on to have a good, good time. Yeah. But in the meantime, is it just like, uh, meeting people through friends? Are you on any apps? Are you checking your DMS? Like what's the way to get in touch with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not on any apps right now. Um, I, I check my DMS. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't, um, I wouldn't say I've gone on any dates from those, but, um, I definitely check those and respond to some. Um, I, I have been on a few dates just nothing is really materialized in anything. And uh, I think I'm just kind of focused on other areas of my life right now. Okay, ladies, you heard it. The DMs are open. All right, um, there's yeah. been some breakup rumors, you know, with Bachelor in Paradise. Have you heard about the breakup rumors with Demi and Christian? What do you know about how they're doing? Yeah, uh, I, I actually didn't hear too much about that until a couple of days ago. And um, I was actually gonna reach out to um, Christian, because I you know, hadn't talked to her in a while, and you know she was really awesome when I met her in Paradise. Um, and uh, you know, honestly, I have, I have no idea what the deal is there. Um, you know, I, I if they were to have broken up, I completely get it because I kind of went through a similar situation, a little different. But um, I think when you come off the show, you're on this high, you come off the fairy tale, and all the fans are so supportive of you and you kind of get that in your head and you think, okay, you know, yeah, we're, we're great with each other. We should keep dating and all that. And I think that's why a lot of people end up dating for a while. And then once they finally like think about their relationship and realize that they're not right for each other, then they break up. Um, for Whitney and I, we kind of realized that sooner than later and we just try to be mature about it and end the relationship rather than just, keep trying at something that wasn't going to work out. So if, you know, they 
did break up or are thinking about it, you know, I completely get it. It's, it's just a tough situation to go through. Um, and there's no really right way to go about it, you know? What about your former castmates? Uh, how's Mike doing? Dylan, Matt, Donald? Yeah, Mike. Mike is uh, my day one homie. Love that guy. Um, he's doing well. He's uh, he's just living life. I'm actually going to see him this Saturday. So excited about that. Um, Dylan, also a really good friend of mine. I think he's doing really well. Him and Hannah are doing great. Um, spending a lot of time together, which is awesome. Good to see. And then Matt Donald, uh, you know, he's, he's doing well also. <laughs> um, I'm going to see him in... Uh, a week and a half actually out in LA. Um, and then I'm doing a trip with him next summer, which will be really cool. Oh, fun. Um, so yeah, everyone's doing well. And have you been watching your former bachelor at Hannah B on Dancing with the Stars? How do you think she's doing in your opinion? Honestly, I haven't seen uh, a single episode, but I am 100% supportive of her. Um, I, I know she's been having a tough time with yeah. the judges. I heard Carrie Ann is being a little uh, tough on her. Yeah. So um, Carrie Ann, you know, you gotta gotta lighten up a little bit. Yeah. I heard Hannah B's crushing it. Um, obviously, wish her the best. You know, really enjoy getting to know her, and you know that dinner of that picture you showed. Um, that was like the first time I'd seen her since she dumped me, basically. <laughs> um, so it was a little awkward at first, but it was cool to see her and like. You, you definitely still have that bond there because you went through this shared experience. So, yeah, I have so much respect for her. She's such a strong, you know, beautiful woman and um, obviously want the best for her. I have to ask you about Peter, the new Bachelor. Did you expect him to be the new Bachelor? And uh, will you see yourself making an appearance on the next season as a guest? <laughs> um, so I, I, I think I made it pretty clear that I was Team Mike, you know, the... <laughs> uh, the whole time. Not that I don't want Peter to be the bachelor, but I think Mike would have been great. Mike was my roommate everywhere and um, was so supportive of him, you know, being in that role. But um, I think Pete, Pete will be great. The whole season of the bachelor, I said that Peter was a dark horse because um, he's quiet, but he's, you know, he knows his game and, um, you know, obviously he's a pilot. He knows all these magic tricks too. And he would like mesmerize us in the house with them. I just knew he's, He's like, he's the guy. He's such a sweet, you know, nice guy. Um, I think he'll do great. I know that there will probably be a lot of drama. Um, <laughs> as there always from, is. As there <laughs> always is. Um, yeah, and so yeah. I, I just hope he can handle that well. Um, yeah. And if he does that, I think he'll, you know, find his person. All right, Connor, it is time for Just Between Us. <laughs> yeah. So your buddy Tyler C. was here, and he has a question for you. Hey Connor, it's Tyler. Just between us, what was your favorite memory of me during The Bachelorette? My favorite memory of you is when we started playing spades and me and Dylan would whoop you and Mike all the time and we doubled backed and did it again. So that's my favorite memory. All right, what's your favorite memory of him? Oh boy, that's, uh, that's a big call. I would say the other way around, my favorite memory was Mike and I whooping Dylan and uh, Tyler in spades. Uh, it was a pretty daily occurrence, so uh, it was a lot of fun. And um, also a shout out, Mike and I would love to actually challenge Dylan and Tyler to a basketball game that Ooh. we had been planning, but they had Ooh. been too scared to actually play. So oh, let's snap. make that happen. A reality check basketball matchup, right? <laughs> I'm here for it. All right, oh, yeah. before we go, uh, what are you most excited about coming up? Um, I'm starting my own business, so I'm super excited about that. It's a uh, you know, functional health and wellness brand. Um, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, and uh, it's awesome that it's finally happening. So super pumped about that. And you know, stay tuned. Um, a lot of that stuff will be kind of released in the next month or two, and um, just really looking forward to it. All right, Connor, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Best of luck with everything. We're going to head to break. When we come back, Dave and I are going to send you off with another moment of reality TV gold. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, Dave, that was a really fun show. Yeah, parenting talk, sex talk, ghost talk, we've had it all. <laughs> big thanks to our guests, Dean, Nikki, and Connor. Make sure you guys are following at People on Twitter so you can catch the latest episode of Reality Check, which streams Monday through Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. All right, to wrap up the show, here's a moment from our Retro Reality Vault. I'm Andrea Belke. And I'm Dave Quinn. And, and that, that was, was your, your Reality Check. check. <laughs> John, here's your buddy Dan. I can't wait to meet this guy. In this 2003 episode of Survivor, Johnny Fairplay pulls off the most notorious family visit ever. Before the show began, Johnny had told his friend Dan to lie about the health of his grandmother. What happened? Jeez. He's not around. Jeff Probst and the entire cast are completely fooled, but it was all a despicable ploy to secure sympathy votes. Grandmother just died. Johnny wound up finishing in third place, but the dead grandma lie remains one of the great moments in reality history. You generously gave up a chance to spend time with your loved ones so that John could get a little more information about his grandma. And easily made Fair Play the most ironically named villain we'll ever see on Survivor. My grandmother's sitting home watching Jerry Springer right now. <laughs>